for yourself and pull away just I mean how big of an impact was Cove in the mm -hmm. in the defense and just being able to clamp down there yeah I mean all the way around our defense uh, you know we're a better offensive team when when we defend uh, it's easier to go against you know defenses when they're in transition or, or broken I guess you could say um, a lot of times uh, you know you get you get a team where you know somebody drives to the basket and you know they're deep in penetration if you can get out and run uh, you know you're, you're in an advantage situation um, but Cove, Cove was great um, you know we had a number of guys step up and you know holding the team like that to 13 points in the second quarter um, uh, it's a big credit to that locker room uh, what did you see also from from Wiggins? You know, kind of. He, you, you said you were looking for him to get a rhythm, and it seemed like he was a little bit closer to what you wanted tonight. Yeah, he was. He was, and um, more than anything, I like that he had uh, eight assists and one turnover. And um, you know, I think that's uh, that that shows the imp your impact in the game without just scoring the basketball. And uh, you know, that's what we need out of him for us to um, take next steps. The defensive end, the efficient offense, moving the ball, hitting the glass. Is that one of the more complete efforts you've yeah, seen out of this yeah. team this year? And that's what we just talked about um, with our group. Um, I thought we could have had a better fourth quarter. Um, understand it's, you know, so sometimes it's tough to play with a lead in a situation like that. But, um, you know, we, we want to stay true to, uh, you know, our growth mindset. And um, the fourth quarter, there were a lot of things that, that we can improve upon. Brian, uh, back to Andrew for a second. After the hot start he had to the season he's had you know uh, injuries uh, illnesses pop up Carl gets hurt and so defenses can focus more on him do you with Carl coming back do you kind of get the sense that maybe this can be a jumping off point for Andrew to kind of get back mm -hmm. to where he was those first three four weeks of the season yeah I mean obviously as a coach um, that's what you'd hope and uh, you know there have been things that have been out of his uh, out of our control but you know, we got to make sure that we just weather those. And, uh, you know, we don't want to look at those as uh, things that, you know, maybe made us take any types of steps back. We want to look at those as um, situations where we were able to learn about other guys, um, learn about ourselves. And, uh, you know, you, you do that through adversity. And so, you know, with that, we think that with Andrew, Andrew and, and Carl, you know, um, you know, Progressing and, and hopefully coming back in the near future, uh, you know we'll uh, we'll see see both those guys be able to flourish. As it relates to to Covington and the, and the defense and kind of his hands, how was he able to uh, have such active hands and be able to go for steals without necessarily mm -hmm. breaking the defense down? Yeah, um, you have to ask him that because he's you know he's a talent and. Uh, you know, we, we get on him when he when he goes for steals and he doesn't get it and it breaks the defense down. But when he goes for a steal and he gets it, it looks great. Um, you know, so we joke with him about that. But, um, you know, there's a reason he's an elite defender in this league. His instincts, um, his instincts are exceptional. How has Gorgie expanded his role both in terms of what you expect and how mm -hmm. you can game plan with him and what you're thinking about doing when cat gets back yeah. uh you know his elevated play and the way he's kind of changed his profile how does that fit into the future do you think yeah i mean he's uh you know he's stepped up and that's what that's what you want to see when when guys are um not available to play uh you see guys step up and gorgie's a professional and i think um you know he's he's shown me some things too i mean i've, I've been on him to roll uh you know i you know, and that's on me. I, I can admit when, um, you know, maybe I, I jumped to a conclusion on that, and um, I'm sure he'll see this. But you know, he was always wanting to pop, and I told him he had to roll. Um, now I'd say he's a guy who mixes it up. So he's a roll guy, but you know, he can he can read and pop a little bit too. But um, with that, we we've learned that, um, you know, we hit him on a couple trail actions. Uh, you know, we call it a rugby action where the point guard dribbles at the big defender who's who's tra who's um, a lot of times in the paint and uh, you know Gorgie's able to hit that three from the top of the key and that's something that he's worked on a lot um, before he was just working on corner threes and he's worked a lot on above the break threes Ryan to the uh, naked eye it, it seems like you guys have been maybe adding to your defensive package mm -hmm. switching a, a, a lot more is that kind of building on the success you've been having on that end or more opponent dependent what, what's what's kind of uh, going into that 
Yeah, it's it's more. I mean, as a coach and as a coaching staff, um, you don't just put things in on the fly um, through the season. I mean, sometimes you know you'll you'll think about you'll have your packages and you'll think about what can work with um, certain personnel um, to more defensively, uh, and then uh, you know you you find times when you think you can put in. You know, when you okay, we're gonna have three days of practice. We'll, we're able to work on this a little bit more. But um, you know, we spent a few days up north early in. in you know, before training camp started, and you know, you as a co- as coaches, you map out when you want to put in certain things, when you think it, it'll be good to put these things in. Um, so you have your checklist. You know, that's both offensively and defensively. You don't get through it all, but you have an idea. And um, I'd say we're we're right on track, and um, that's a huge credit to the coaches in that locker room. Our, our staff is, um, you know, there's a reason that, that I I always talk about how um, prepared the, these players are, and that's because the assistant coaches in that locker room and, and their work and. And um, just how they are as teachers, um, I'm just thrilled to be a part of that group. Ryan Portland scores 34 in the f- over here, the first quarter. Um, what was the key adjustment you guys make to go from 34 to 13 points in the second? I mean, what was the conversation you guys had after the first, and how do you how did you lock it in like that so so well? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was. Uh, it was, they were hu- there were a couple huddles I think and the thing I'm liking about our group is they're talking more amongst themselves and uh, you know it's we weren't we weren't happy with you know we've we played you know I thought I think pretty good defense as of late and giving up 34 points we, we've started games um, better you know lately as well and giving up 34 points early um, early in the game when we talk about a team being you know Portland's on there on a fifth grade, fifth game of a five game road trip um, those are the the times when you want to come out and be more aggressive and you know we weren't doing that and um, you know uh, credit to uh, the players for um, talking amongst themselves and, and then implementing the game plan a little bit better in that second quarter Ryan, is that kind of the, the Josh Akogi you, you want to see? I mean, just with the energy yes. that he brought and yes. the efficiency that... I thought Josh was great tonight. I thought I thought he was awesome. And, you know, just his energy. And and he's, uh, you know, he, he's, a, he's a guy that that feeds off of um, the crowd, too. And I think the crowd feeds off of him. So it's always fun to watch. And, you know, I, I thought, you know, on a Thursday night, you know, our, our fans uh, were really good with you know, playing to these young guys too, especially when they went on that, that run. And, um, you know, it was good to see PJ and, and Kyle there, you know, a couple um, guys who have won uh, as of late uh, here in Minnesota. So they brought us some luck too. Seems like throughout his career here, the team defense has generally been better when gorgie has been on the court. How much do you think he's had to do with this recent evolution on that end of the floor of late? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, you know, I, I don't know what the, the statistic off the top of my head would be in terms of if we're better with Gorgie, better with Nas, better with Cat, better um, with Noah. Uh, but, you know, Gorgie, he, he is he is um, a veteran presence defensively where he, he understands that communication is the, the main, you know, key uh, defensively. And he's, he's a guy who will call things out continuously, will call coverages, and uh, he does make it easier on the young guys a lot of times. And, you know, especially with with younger bigs it, it comes with time but um you know i think you can look at a lot of bigs who have had success in this league and playing the type of coverages that we play kind of a, more of a drop coverage and pick and rolls um you know one that comes to mind is deandre jordan he's a guy who's always calling plays out he's always uh calling coverages out um you know no matter no matter how you 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 know, maybe feeling physically, uh, you know, on a night in, night out basis because it's a long season. Um, if you're if you're a guy who's engaged and can communicate, um, you can make up for a lot of things.